Hoffa Day. I'm the owner of Bum's largest tourist attraction group. The pandemic's been very tough for all of us, and particularly for my team members. So I'm really appreciative and grateful for the PUA assistance to our team members, and more recently, the SVOG federal grant that allowed us to reopen these facilities and re-employ everyone at a critical time when PUA ended. From myself and my team, on behalf of all of us, thank you for the federal funds that allowed us to reopen. The federal fund you provide saved many, many jobs. Thank you, thank you so much. We employ about 35 technicians for our shows. Thank you for the federal funds that kept us going. Thank you for helping with the federal funds. Thank you for the federal funds. Thank you for helping to save our jobs. Thank, Thank you for the federal funds. The ad was paid for with official funds from the office of Congressman Michael F.Q. San Nicolas. Hoffa Day, this is Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. If you're struggling to pay rent and utilities because of the pandemic, your government can help. Our Emergency Rental Assistance Program provides direct relief to you. To date, over $6.9 million has helped over 1,500 households. Apply online at doa.guam.gov or call the Department of Administration's Emergency Rental Assistance Program at 671-638-4518 or 19. The Joyner Sked murder trial is coming to an end, with no one taking the stand to refute Ms. Sked's claim she did not murder Umatic Mayor Daniel Sanchez. Prosecutor Leonardo Rapatis has decided against calling a rebuttal witness. Ms. Sked testified in her defense at Thursday and delivered compelling testimony about the events that led up to the murder of Sanchez. When asked if he believes Ms. Sked is guilty, Mr. Rapatis said, um. We're going to the end, and I, you know, the people believe that we have uh, its case, and we believe that um, we provided the evidence, um, enough evidence for the jury to find her guilty. Of course, we, um, that's what we uh, intend to do. What do you think her motive was? Do you, do you well, know? at this point, you know, I'll, I'll wait for um, closing arguments. For closing arguments. Yeah. Candid asked Mr. Rapatis why he did not call Rudy Kanata to the stand if he believed Sked was guilty. Mr. Kanata is Sked's boyfriend and was arrested the same day last year on charges. He also murdered Sanchez. He faces trial after Sked. Mr. Rapatis replied. Well, he's, you know, there are certain, uh, he has his own lawyer and he has, um, he's still pending. He hasn't been convicted of anything. Um, so calling him as a witness, uh, you know, he may end up, uh, one of the things that we can't do is intentionally call a witness who's going to exercise their Fifth Amendment privilege. So oh, that's, one, that's one of the, the issues that, uh, okay. plus he's a co-defendant, we, we, we weren't going to do that. If he, you know, in, I'm not going to say this case, but any other case, 
if you have co-defendants who, who uh, plead guilty, uh, then they will be available to be a witness. But generally when they're not, uh, they haven't gone through the system yet, they are generally not available. Okay, so my theory went away, well, right out the window. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So, uh, which leads to my next question. Um, if Joyner Skid is, is convicted, then that will be used for Rudy Kanata's case? I, you know, I, that's premature right now. Okay. It's a premature decision. Okay. Let's want to get through the, these next few stages first. As Timblin left the courthouse, he shared a few words with Candid as well. Mr. Timblin said, Let's just say that I am much more optimistic about our prospects than I was when we started the trial. That's it. I mean, like I said, it's, uh, it ain't over till it's over, and uh, we'll see what happens. The trial will continue with closing arguments Monday, February 21st at 9.30 a.m. For Canada News, I'm Johnny Rosario. Have you or a loved one been injured through medical negligence or substandard medical care? Are you angry? File complaints through the Guam Board of Medical Examiners to make physicians accountable. It's time that we stand up to protect our families and the people of Guam. The complaint form can be found at GBME's website, www.guammedical.org. Have questions or want the form emailed to you? Contact us at asher at asherdeanlebofsky.com or our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash bunzoasher. We do not provide legal or other professional info or services. We do this to improve medical care on Guam through medical accountability equity. Justice for those injured or killed through medical negligence on Guam. The Jones Act is a 1920 law justified on national security grounds as a means to bolster the U.S. maritime industry. It restricts domestic shipping to vessels that are U.S. built, U.S. owned, U.S. flagged, and U.S. crewed. However, this law boosts costs by banning foreigners from competing and forcing Americans to purchase ships that are up to eight times more expensive than those built in other countries. The result is higher transportation costs. Shipping oil from Texas to the Northeast, for example, costs three times more than importing oil from Africa. Ultimately, consumers foot the bill. In addition, higher shipping costs push freight from ships onto other sources of transportation, such as trucks, which means more traffic and pollution. Meanwhile, this blatant protectionism has failed to benefit builders of ships in the U.S., whose production is less than 1% of those in China and South Korea. Domestic builders have seen over 300 shipyards close since the early 1980s. Jones Act defenders claim the law ensures adequate U.S. ships during times of war, but during U.S. deployments during operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm, foreign flagged commercial ships carried twice as much equipment as their U.S. counterparts. In fact, the U.S. was so desperate for shipping that it twice requested the use of a cargo ship from Moscow. Both requests were denied. So the Jones Act has failed to achieve its shipbuilding and national security goals while driving up costs for consumers. It's time for this outdated, costly, and ineffective law to be repealed. It's time to end the Jones Act.